What's up everybody welcome back to another example chart from exotic astrology and if you have not subscribed to my channel yet then please subscribe to it and what are we going to discuss today today we are with the chart of the main man <laughs> he is the reason of the existence of this place where I am situated currently or rather I would say he is the cause of the destruction of the place where I am situated currently. He is none other than Adolf Hitler, the famous Hitler who has gone down in the pages of history books from India to Pakistan to the United States. Okay, so today we shall discuss about the chart of Adolf Hitler. We shall see the different combinations and placements of planets and conjunctions and aspects which led him to become who he is or rather giving an indication of who actually he is because the chart is not the cause of the person. The person's reflection is the chart okay and similarly the chart is also the reflection of the person vice versa now first of all what do we need to check we need to check the placement of the sun moon and the lord of the ascendant okay so now this is the first house as you all know again this is not the seventh house okay this is number sign libra this is first house okay 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. I am again and again repeating this numbering scheme because most of you, including me, we have done blunders in the initial days of our astrological training, right? So to avoid such pitfalls, I keep doing the numbering again and again. Now, and yes, before beginning, as I say, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will save you from people like Hitler. <laughs> okay, so here, what do you see? He is a Libra ascendant. Okay, number seven is right there in the Lagna itself. Okay, so his life focus will be showing himself to other people. And why am I saying this? Because the Lord of the ascendant, which is Venus, has gone to the seventh house okay and it is retrograde in 24 degrees now venus is the lord of the ascendant that means the person his body has gone into the house of other people the seventh house okay and which sign is it it is in the sign of aries which is the sign of the self the original first house of the zodiac so he will always focus on showing himself to the others okay and doing things in a way by which he and his image can gain popularity okay now this is in a retrograde position venus is retrograde here because this r is written here so whenever a planet is retrograde especially if it is the lord of the ascendant then the ideals related to that planet or the houses which the planet is ruling can be compromised by the person okay so for example here venus is the lord of the first house first house is the house of intelligence okay your direction in life your buddhi as you say now buddhi not necessarily means mundane intelligence it also means that it also means your way of thinking the how the way how you see life okay so when the Lagnesh or the Ascendant Lord is retrograde, it can show that a person, his morals are compromised here. Okay, He will compromise on his morals and his ability to think what is right and wrong can be challenged certain times or this can lead to over obsession. Okay, Whatever he thinks is right is right. He doesn't listen to anybody. Well, which was definitely the case with Hitler. Okay. Had he not attacked Russia in the winter, well, history would have been something else today, probably. Even after getting repeated suggestions from his uh, generals and field marshals, he made the decision of attacking Russia. He made the blunder of attacking Russia during the winters. Okay, So there comes this obsession and it is the sign of Aries, which means he only does what he wants to do. Okay, Now, 
there's a lot of power in this chart how because sun is in the sign of aries sun is exalted here and if you see the degrees 8 degree 35 minutes which means it is nearest to its peak exaltation in 8 to 10 degrees okay so his what what does sun represent sun represents your commitment okay the what you think is right and wrong it is somewhat the significator of the lagna because it is one of the significators of the lagna yes mars represents the body and sun is the significator of the first house so sun exalted means that the person has very high ideals of what he thinks is right and what is wrong okay and what he wants to achieve in life okay he is very determined very goal oriented very much focused okay always working towards what he wants to achieve in life okay and there is a lot of determination lot of strength lot of power lot of will power okay and lot of energy behind this because sun is in its exaltation sign in aries okay and as if this was less mars the planet of fire and aggression is in the sign of aries it is in its own sign forming a very powerful mahapurush yoga here named as ruchak mahapurush yoga about which we will talk later okay if mars is situated in the sign of aries or scorpio or capricorn in these four houses the first fourth seventh and tenth then ruchak mahapurush yoga is formed which makes a person very brutal authoritative dominating etc the traits of mars gets exemplified to a very huge extent okay and as if this was less it is also sitting with sun see so sun and mars are together so which means lot of fire lot of energy lot of passion lot of willingness to do things in life this is a this chart is the chart of a person who is very progressive okay who always sees ahead okay now the important thing to be noticed here is the planet mercury is in the 7th house okay mercury gets directional strength in the 7th in the first house in the lagna because first house is the head okay we will discuss about the directional strengths later which is referred to as digbala okay so whenever a planet is sitting opposite to the digbala house which means opposite of the first house is the 7th house it means the planet is in dik shunya okay so dik wala means the planet is very well situated in that house the blessings of that direction okay the first house represents the east okay so the blessings of the east is there and the sun rises in the east okay and it is very good to study in the morning that is why because mercury and jupiter both get it's digbala in the first house so whenever a planet is in the opposite of the house of digbala it is known as dikshunya which means that the person will make wrong choices related to that planet okay so what is mercury mercury is the significator of decisions okay so there will be certain situations in his life where he will definitely end up making blunders okay that is confirmed in this chart because mercury is sitting in the 7th house okay now at the same time mercury in the 7th house also makes the person very good with negotiations etc okay because 7th house is the house of negotiations so mercury being in the 7th house he could very easily negotiate his terms conditions etc with people and because this is with sun mars and venus and mercury venus are also natural friends so which gives a very uh, good image to the person okay if mercury venus are together because the person is very flamboyant by nature okay but the flamboyance will be reduced because of the presence of the two fiery planets also so overall these four planets simply means that a person who is very aggressive very headstrong and he is ready to do whatever it takes to achieve his goal okay and he will do that with compromise of his own ideals why because the lord of the ascendant venus is retrograde okay i will explain what is retrograde later but retrograde simply means that 
in compared to the earth the planet is moving backwards okay which means the houses or the significations which the planet rules is not in a stable position it means instability okay so venus also signifies the wife okay women and because it is also retrograde here apart from being the lord of the ascendant okay as a natural significator of marriage he did not have a very good relationship with his wife or with his secretary or with his girlfriend or whatever you want to name that person as okay well that's still a controversy who she was <laughs> and if, I, at all if at all she was his wife or not so i am not going to delve into that controversy here but you can see some issue there with venus yes because of its retrograde motion and that too it is conjunct with fiery planet so venus is a watery planet okay water why because it signifies emotions love comfort nourishment home okay now when it is with fiery planets what happens like sun and mars the water of the planet venus gets extinguished okay now here fortunately venus is very away from the sun okay it is sun is in 8 degrees and venus is in 24 degrees but unfortunately venus is very close to mars okay it is almost 4 degrees uh, almost it is in the same degree sorry it is in the same degree almost it is almost hitting each other <laughs> so you can see the and mars venus people are very much aggressive in matters of romance and passionate in terms of relationships in the beginning and then slowly the water dies out it is like you heat a pan in south india they make dosas okay so the pan is very hot okay then you suddenly put some water the water is consumed immediately so mars venus it is something like that okay there's a lot of passion a lot of energy a lot of vigor a lot of romance in the beginning but as soon as the romance is gone the water of venus is extinguished okay so that is a pretty comment here in this chart apart from this there are four planets in the seventh house which also tells me that this person is going to earn a lot of name and fame in this life okay he is going to be tremendously famous okay and also because eighth house also represents fame because eighth house is also the house of the dead okay it is it represents uh, things where people remember you after your death okay or how people remember you those things can also be seen here and especially if the eighth lord is well placed okay or if the eighth house has planets which are strong okay then we can say or if the eighth lord is in conjunction with planets which are strong then we can say that the person will be remembered after his death okay now here who is the eighth lord number two is here in the eighth house this is the eighth house right this is seventh house this is eighth house so the sign is taurus number two so ruler is venus okay so venus is in the seventh house okay and seventh house is originally the house of libra okay of venus his own house so venus likes to sit there in the seventh house now this is with a mars which is forming ruchak mahapurush yoga and it is also with an exalted sun okay and with his friend mercury okay so venus with sun mars may not be very good for relationships which definitely did not work out in his case okay but for and it is also the lagna lord so whenever the eighth lord is connected to the lagna lord then things increase okay things increase i mean to say the probability of his remembrance after his death increases because lagna is the person and eighth house is he after he dies so in case of a libra ascendant the person becomes the uh, the lagnesh the lord of the ascendant and the lord of the eighth house is same okay so that is why there are uh, many libra ascendants who are very famous okay for example Mahatma Gandhi is also Libra ascendant and by famous I mean famous after death okay now people will tell no this is just a uh, statistics or uh, this is just uh, exception okay maybe but there are other yogas also which support it okay because the planet which is ruling the first house and the eighth house is the same okay Venus so depending on the positioning of Venus 
the things can either improve drastically or it can go down drastically okay so here venus is placed with these two planets which are very powerful in these houses okay although sun is not very strong in the seventh house but it is exalted here okay and sun in the seventh simply means that the person wants to show himself to the others okay and it can create create issues in marriage and also mars is in the seventh house here which is a famous dosha in astrology known as the manglik dosha okay therefore what we can conclude from here is that he will make some blunders because mercury is in dikshunya position okay and apart from this his ideals will be compromised for name and fame he will do anything and everything because the lord of the ascendant is retrograde and ascendant represents your ideals okay your thinking your thought process and sun mars very aggressive personality okay now the peculiar thing here is the presence of rahu in the ninth house okay there are certain positions for planets which are known as marana karaka sthans okay marana karaka means the place where the planet dies okay so if you carefully observe here there are uh, two uh, two planets which are in marana karaka sthan okay one is jupiter in the third house and the other is rahu in the ninth house okay why does rahu die in the ninth house because rahu is the devil okay so you are telling the devil to go and send the name of god okay to go to the church okay because ninth house is the house of god guru's religion scriptures okay so when rahu goes into the ninth house he destroys the ninth house by which i mean to say that there are peculiar things about religion and spirituality which he imbibes into himself okay why i am saying into himself because rahu from the ninth house aspects the lagna okay so which means that there will be something very peculiar in his mind about religion about god about spirituality okay and because rahu is in the sign of gemini okay it is exalted here rahu gets exalted in gemini that is why this trait which he has will be very very strong and he will pursue this thing aggressively okay had rahu been in a fire sign or in a water sign where it gets weak or debilitated okay then he would not be very strong in this matter in this matter i mean to say that regarding what rahu gives in the ninth house which means something weird about religion okay and this is very true because he had this conception that jews are the cause of the misfortune of this world or of germany or of europe okay and so they should be killed right away yes he made them second class citizens and everybody knows about the holocaust what a brutal scenario that was thousands and lakhs of people killed in gas gas chambers everybody knows about it okay i need not give an introduction about it and also jupiter here although it is in the sign of sagittarius okay sagittarius jupiter means that the person is very fixed with his ideals but the predicament is it is in the third house which is the sign of gemini okay where jupiter dies actually dies i mean to say that it is the marana karaka sthan for jupiter so here the funny part is it is in sagittarius in own sign but house wise it is dead so this means that the person will be very strong with his ideals okay but it will be for the wrong reasons do you understand how i st study this chart so hitler was very strong he said and because jupiter is connected with rahu ketu so something weird about religion will be there okay and as if this was less his moon okay which is the significator of his mind is also there in sagittarius okay so his concept about religion and spirituality and especially about the jews okay this was very unorthodox and he was personally an atheist if i am not wrong although there are some controversies about this some say that he was uh to some extent a believer of christianity but uh i i don't think that is true okay because moon and uh, jupiter both uh, are the significators of spirituality because moon is the mind okay and 
Jupiter itself represents spirituality. They are connected with uh, this Ketu and Rahu, okay, because they are in the third house. So, although it is in the sign of Sagittarius, now because of this, what happened? He was very much strong with what he thought was right and wrong, okay. And this Jupiter from the third house is aspecting the seventh house, okay. And wherever Jupiter aspects, Jupiter expands, okay. So, he expanded the seventh house of name and fame, etc., etc. Well, there's another predicament in this chart. That is, Jupiter for a Libra ascendant is considered to be something known as a functional malefic, okay, which means he's the ruler of two malefic houses, which means his aspects may not be that great, okay, apart from the natural significations of Jupiter. For example, here Jupiter is ruling the third house because third house has the sign Sagittarius and sixth house has the sign Pisces. Okay. So sixth house is what? Trials, tribulations, quarrels, fights, deceits. Okay. All these things are enemies. Sixth house. Okay. So Jupiter from the third house. Third house is also the house of war. Okay. Third house has Jupiter. So from there, he is aspecting the seventh house where his lagnesh is placed, okay, and Sun, Mars, and all these planets are placed. So, because of this, uh, the traits of the sixth house came into the seventh house, okay, and that is why his whole life was centered around fighting, killing, centered around enemies because. Sixth house is representing enemies and before saying about Jupiter, I forgot to say that why is third house considered to be a Maranakarak situation for Jupiter because third house is the house of courage. Okay. And when Jupiter sits there, the person, because Jupiter represents humility, because when you go towards spirituality, you have to be humble in front of God and your gurus okay but when Jupiter sits in the third house because it is the house which is having Mars as the significator okay and because of that the person has difficulty bowing down to his guru accepting what the guru says accepting what God has said these people are those people who say that no I don't uh, believe on God or even if I believe I will do it on my own terms okay so because of that there is a predicament with Jupiter in the third okay and also third house is originally the sign of Gemini which is uh, eighth from the eighth house of uh, Scorpio okay so eighth from eighth is the third okay so Scorpio is the original eighth house of sexuality prostitution etc uh, sexual encounters behind the scenes and eighth from that is the sign of Gemini okay and if you see the sign of Gemini it is uh, two people uniting their meeting so because of that there is the energy of overindulgence in sexuality in the third house okay now this does not mean that Hitler would have indulged or maybe he would have indulged that we do not know so we cannot comment on that but what happens is when Jupiter, the planet of wisdom and spirituality goes there, okay, then the aspect of religion and spirituality and his connection to divine beings, that is completely destroyed, okay. And then the person loses his morals and he glides down to lower states by doing abominable activities. Now, here... Jupiter is with moon. This is also known as a famous yoga in astrology. It is known as Gajakesri Yoga. Okay. Gajakesri Yoga means the person is extremely focused and very much determined and very headstrong and very positive about what he wants to do. Okay. <laughs> Which Hitler definitely was. Okay. And also you can see in the charts of great leaders whenever they are they have had moon in the third house okay because third house is the house of war okay there has been issues with the public who they are controlling okay and uh, there's another uh, president whose cha whose name i will not name of usa who has moon in the third house and we all know what uh, happened after he became the president okay united states was in perpetual war with countries okay anyways that that's a deviation i'll not go to there because moon represents the public okay who you are ruling okay and when moon sits in the third house and 
as if this was less now see there's this gaj kesari yoga which is supposedly to be a positive yoga but here it is not acting that way because of two reasons first reason is now gaj kesari yoga is acting he is very headstrong but i am seeing the overall result of this gaj kesari yoga is not very positive because of two reasons first reason is jupiter is in a uh, precarious state in the third house with ketu okay and second reason is here jupiter is the ruler of the sixth house okay and the ruler of the third house which third house is also what struggles difficulties hard work etc and sixth house is enemies fights so now he was very determined towards fighting people <laughs> so now you now it's up to you you call this as good or you call this as bad and i would leave it up to you okay whatever you want to call it okay and lastly i would say the placement of saturn which is there in the 10th house okay now what is saturn saturn represents your structure growth duty commitment okay your ability to do hard work persistence okay all these things are represented by saturn okay now here saturn is also the fourth lord and also it is the fifth lord of position okay because fifth house is the eighth from the 10th house okay so when the person gets promoted what happens he gets a new job okay it is not a new job but it is like getting a new job yes so eighth house is death and rebirth so from the 10th if you count eight places 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay so it is the fifth house so fifth house can represent denials of job or it can represent promotions depending on the dignity okay and here saturn especially is a yoga kara yoga karaka planet for libra lagna because saturn I will discuss about Yoga Karakas later. But Yoga Karaka simply means a planet who is very auspicious for the chart. Okay. And here Saturn is a Yoga Karaka because it is ruling the one of the Kendras, which is the fourth house, and another Trikona because the sign of Capricorn and Aquarius is falling in the fourth house and the fifth house. Fourth house is a Kendra and fifth house is a Trikona. So whenever any planet rules simultaneously a Kendra and a Trikon, it is considered to be a Yoga Karaka. Yoga means to give addition, to bless, okay, to do good for the chart. He is considered to be the best friend of the Lord of the Ascendant, which is Venus, okay. And that is why Venus and Saturn are best friends, okay, because they support each other's agendas, okay. Now here, uh, Venus is in the seventh house as you have seen okay and saturn is in the tenth house so saturn from the tenth house is also aspecting venus with its tenth aspect because tenth from the tenth house is the seventh house okay so that means that this person will have the blessings of saturn because saturn is yoga karaka for this chart and saturn is aspecting venus so it means that the traits of saturn okay which means what duty commitment structure discipline which is very much needed for a libra ascendant because saturn gets exalted in the lagna because saturn gets exalted in libra right so connection of saturn venus in a libra ascendant chart is considered to be very good okay well but here uh, the the things are not very good because saturn is not in a very good sign because it is in a sign of detriment which is considered to be opposite of uh, his own sign because capricorn is his own sign and then he's sitting opposite it is like you are sitting outside of your home you are looking to your home okay <laughs> and uh, because saturn is also a natural malefic it is aspecting his fourth house okay so hitler was originally not from germany right he came into germany later he was not from germany originally so this aspect of saturn in to his fourth house separated him from his homeland okay and Although it is the fourth lord, but still it is ultimately a natural malefic. So its effects will be there, irrespective of whatever you say. Okay. And Saturn here is also aspecting sun with his tenth aspect. Okay. Now, whenever Saturn aspects sun, what happens? 
the person can feel very low about himself okay or herself so because of this what can happen now see sun is exalted here okay it is like a person who has a machine gun okay but he is in a suppressed state of not being able to use it because saturn is subduing this sun okay so when you do that what happens he will go on shooting people recklessly right left <laughs> You see the negative part of exaltation comes out here. Had Sun been in Libra and Saturn been in Capricorn as expected by Saturn. Okay. And then Sun is naturally weak. You, you can't do anything there in Libra. But here Sun is exalted. So Sun is like yes man I am going to do whatever I want. But now Saturn is telling my dear sir but I think you can't do this. Okay. And then Sun says, oh, you are telling me I can't do this? Wait, I will prove it to you. Okay, so whenever a planet is exalted and under affliction, it is a serious problem. <laughs> because the planet feels the need to prove itself. Okay, especially when it is under uh, affliction of planet like Saturn, which signifies troubles and denials. Okay, suppressing mentality comes. Okay, when Saturn aspects some planet. Okay, and because Saturn also aspects Venus here, so is marriage was also delayed and that itself is a question that whether he got married or not okay and when whenever saturn aspects mercury the person uh, makes very much planned and his actions are very much planned and well executed okay because mercury signifies our planning abilities etc but again because it is in dikshunya there is a predicament here with mercury so he's likely to make wrong decisions okay and Saturn, Mars are aspecting each other here. Saturn aspects Mars for, with its 10th aspect and Mars aspects Saturn with its 4th aspect. Okay. So this makes the person very hard working. And this is also a predicament because <laughs> it is like uh, pressing the accelerator and the brake simultaneously. Okay. What happens? There's a lot of friction. There's a lot of turmoil inside. Okay. So there's a lot of hard work which is actually needed to do okay so whenever people say that saturn mass combination or mutual aspect is good i always ask do you want to be hard working sir people will say that oh this person is very hard working but which also means that nobody naturally wants to be hard working which means you will be forced to work hard yes so it is a good yoga definitely but you have to work very much in life okay otherwise you will not get things easily the way others get it okay and if you see that uh, saturn here is situated in the 10th house so that is why his rise was from a very humble background okay he was not belonging to a political family or he was not belonging to a government family but because saturn represents the poor class okay the poverty stricken people so and in fact his parents were even come pl planning to commit suicide but due to some reason they decided that let us not commit okay so you can see that when saturn aspects the lagna lord so there can be a lot of struggles in the beginning days okay of his life and from humble beginning his status rises because 10th house is the house of status okay and the lord of the 10th house moon is in the third house of war so his whole life was battling with war <laughs> and especially it is with jupiter the significator of spirituality okay so his uh, one of the things because of which he will be remembered because 10th house is also karma okay one of the things because of which he will be remembered is because of something related to religion which he had done okay which i already said and we all know okay and that is synchronous with the presence of rahu in the ninth house okay so rahu in the ninth house told him that oh these jews are useless they are good for nothing just kill them make them secondary citizens and keep them okay just exploit them okay and this aspects the lagna also so there are a lot of times there's these feelings of deceit hatred anger and betraying somebody okay and at the end that's the funny part here at the end when hitler died he spoke to his closest nearby people and he said that he feels that the jews have cheated him <laughs> so there you go rahu expecting the lagna the person feels cheated <laughs> okay so that is it from my side moon ketu conjunction weird 
weird mental thoughts a person who is clouded okay and a person who feels lost and in that he decides to do whatever he want okay so confusion mentally that is also seen here and this gajakesri yoga not working out ultimately in a very positive way okay so ultimately if you want to summarize this chart it's a very 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 powerful chart very strong chart but only if it was used in a proper direction okay if rahu would be somewhere else perhaps things would have been much better <laughs> but anyways that's history for all of us we have to just see these charts and understand how we can see from the sun moon and the lord of the ascendant okay sun and ascendant lord are in the seventh house of other people so focusing on other people trying to control them sun is controllership authority and moon is in the third house of war okay so that is it from my side if you have any questions queries and comments related to this video then please post it in the comments or else until next time bye bye see you